Hello, I hope everyone's enjoying the Hyperledger Global Forum. We'd like to welcome you here today to the Consortium Building Through Business Value Roundtable Discussion. And with me today are four amazing business leaders and innovators that are driving change through digital transformation and with the help of an application called Trust Your Supplier, a blockchain solution for supplier relationship management that leverages a consortium uh, of leading enterprise to drive trust in business partnerships. Uh, I'd like to take a few minutes to, to introduce you to Trust Your Supplier, uh, and then we'll meet our panel. So Trust Your Supplier, as I mentioned, uh, is a solution that um, um, is built on blockchain, uh, and it's a, a trusted source of supplier information that organizations can consume in a blockchain, in a SaaS application on top of this blockchain platform to reduce risk, to simplify onboarding, and to uh, establish trust and compliance with those, par those partner networks and those partner suppliers um, that they are doing business with currently or that they will do business, in, business with in the future. So this reduces the onboarding complexity, this is reduces the decision-making process, reduces risk, and, and, and simplifies life cycle management uh, relationships with these suppliers. You can see here on the slide a number of uh, logos that represent participants in our network of uh, the governance board members that help drive our network and set uh, set the um, uh, maturity level of the network as it relates to the features and functionalities that are delivered, uh, our founding members that are early adopters and help driving uh, network adoption, and some of the validators and business networks today uh, that are helping integrate uh, uh, those solutions into our blockchain platform. And so if we think about our network and what Trust Your Supplier is, is all about, it's really about redu uh, reducing uh, and eliminating redundant information. Today, many organizations, suppliers in particular, uh, create, uh, create, create peer to peer relationships with their buyers. And those, those buyers acquire information uh, on, a, uh, on a repeated basis. This information is now stored in the blockchain on Trust Your Supplier. And then that information can be consumed by buyers uh, via the blockchain network with l little or no administrative overhead on the part of the supplier. Uh, it's the, the information is real time. It can be monitored. It can be consumed and it can be shared across this network seamlessly and <clears throat> without any additional attracted uh, uh, overhead or administration on behalf of the buyer or supplier. And, and suppliers can be discovered on this network by buyers uh, to enable future business opportunities. And so um, by participating on a network, buyers and suppliers alike uh, realize uh, enhanced compliance, reduce risk, reduce cost, and uh, higher operational, um, uh, uh, higher operational uh, activities as it relates to uh, the interrelationships and the partnerships um, to, uh, to, to do business and to, uh, and to transact in today's world. So I am going to, at this point, introduce our panel. Um, uh, Nuno, uh, why don't we start with yourself? Absolutely. So very good morning, good afternoon to everyone. So my name is Nuno Pedro and I work in Nokia, specifically in the procurement area. I have more than 12 years of experience in the telecom industry. And my main role right now is to lead the trusted supplier project across Nokia, but also on top of this, to establish and provide holistic strategics for key suppliers and partners in Nokia. Great, thanks Nuno. Uh, Eric? Mm -hmm. Sure, thanks Gary. Thanks for having me on the panel and hey everybody. So I'm Eric Evans and I work at Rapid Ratings and I manage our partnerships and alliances and lead a lot of our technical integrations into <clears throat> partner platforms like Trust Your Supplier and really help understand our clients' needs, you know, when they need to integrate into these platforms. So we've really tried to innovate and keep ahead of the curve by, you know, joining up with leading edge platforms like Trust Your Supplier to really help give benefits to our clients you know, to have the latest and freshest data available and to kick off workflows and really to help operationalize all of this and verify their suppliers from a financial health X, uh, point of view. Great, great. Thanks, Eric. Manny? Thanks, Gary. Hello, everyone. So I'm Manny Hunden. I'm 
part of Strand Electric based out of Paris. I'm having close to 17 plus years of experience into procurement, and global supply chain management within automotive and electronics industry. So I'm a global procurement director uh, in charge of uh, digital transformation program within procurement and also uh, processes that cuts across supply interaction within global supply chain. So I'm very happy to interact you know, together with TYS and the consortium of uh, network operator and buyer here today in order to set the stage for uh, deployment of blockchain solution, which facilitates you know efficiency and simplification in our supply data management process. Thank you. Great, thanks, gentlemen. Uh, and I am finally, I'm Gary Store. I am uh, a part of the Trust Your Supplier organization, and I'll be hosting this panel here today. So let's kick this off. Um, Nuno, you've been uh, at the very center of driving digital transformation in your organization uh, with Nokia. Uh, can you talk about how meaningful Trust Your Supplier has been to your mm -hmm. transformation journey? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so first of all, I really would like to say it's an honor for Nokia to be part of this amazing event and also having a very strong discussion here with great speakers and companies. So again, as a technology leader, it's on the DNA of Nokia to be at the forerunner in experimenting how technology really can help the world act together. Being that said, we really could not afford the opportunity to be part of this blockchain initiative that really represents a great opportunity for Nokia to further enhance our supplier's experience and optimize the onboarding process. So now getting straight forward to your question, Trusty Supplier is extremely meaningful for the journey that Nokia is taking right now, because it's gonna be another link in the chain of connecting a number of process for onboarding suppliers. Some of the process in the past were quite manual, but even those which were not, separate systems really can be difficult to handle. So having everything in one place under TYS systems, it really will make a difference. It will bring more transparency, accessibility, and we don't have any doubt that it will transform the execute strategy process very significantly. We already started to onboard a few suppliers. I can tell you straightforward that the feedback is outstanding. The management of Nokia and also our suppliers are really, really uh, positive and happy. And what we look forward right now is really to drive and continue this journey with Chainyard, our partners, our top and valuable suppliers and customers, and with companies across industry that are steering the solution as Rapid Ratings, Schneider, and many others. Great, thanks, Nuno. And so Nuno mentioned um, uh, integration. Uh, and, uh, and along his journey and, and what Nokia is doing. And, and certainly uh, Nokia is uh, very excited about uh, about being part of the consortium. And, and Manny, you're, Schneider Electric is, is also going through a similar journey. Uh, and, you know, I know your back-end enterprise uh, has a lot of integration dependencies associated with um, uh, your, your transformational, um, uh, your transformational journey as well, right? So can you talk a little bit about how you think trust your supplier and the consortium is going to be a part of that solution set yeah thanks Gary. again uh Schneider electric has been you know leading digital transformation with our suppliers uh, in, for the last several years and if you look at in the last few years we have picked up pace and we have been putting together a lot of uh, SaaS solutions in order to you know digitally interact with suppliers across the source to pay processes so one of the topic which is a starting point for us is to manage master data with suppliers. So that's access to information, right? So here we want the suppliers to provide information and uh, the information has to be available across our organization and to also get facilitation of ease of information sharing with our suppliers across the life cycle. This is a big challenge. So even though we have put several cloud solutions today, managing source to contract, supplier relationship management, as well as you know, procure to pay man kind of processes. This is a critical piece, you know, managing master data of suppliers. And we see a big value in terms of you know onboarding TYS into the ecosystem because it's a big idea, right? It's a very unique idea. And TYS is offering a very high value proposition 
not only for buyers, for also suppliers. Because imagine companies like us asking every suppliers to come and update the master data in specific platform. If the supplier is managing several customers, it's a big pain point, right? So what we see a kind of a big attractiveness for our suppliers is to go and manage the master data in one platform and manage uh, the information for several customers, right? So this is a big value add which we feel. And today we also have a big gap in terms of discovering new suppliers. So we, we see uh, again a big value proposition in terms of uh, enabling supplier discovery with the pre-qualified information which we don't have you know, today in, in a specific uh, platform or in a specific uh, kind of data, right? So that's where we see a big uh, benefit in terms of integrating TYS into our ecosystem. And um, moving forward, I think uh, TYS should be also able to open up several capabilities with respect to specific processes, which also we'll see as a big value enabler. Absolutely, absolutely. And so, you know, Manny mentioned, um, you know, master data. That's a that's a challenge I think that plagues all large organizations is managing that data. Not only on the on the on the buyer side, and, and all all large organizations have um, a, a, a master data repository. In some cases, more than one, uh, which is a challenge. But suppliers are asked to bring that information um, to all of their customers over and over and over again, and that's. That's one area that a blockchain solution like Trust Your Supplier um, can bring that together and provide that single sovereign identity of a supplier and, and let it be proliferated out to the many customers that they're they're currently doing business with. And then so, so you know, Eric's with us today and, and Eric has a little bit of a different role in that uh, Eric has multiple roles within uh, within the Trust Your Supplier network. Within Trust Your Supplier, one can be a buyer or a supplier. Uh, and there's also this notion of third-party data providers that provide um, uh, authoritative and expert commentary and performance analytics around a, uh, around a supplier. And so uh, Eric is with Rapid Ratings, and I think we all know what Rapid Ratings does, but Eric is gonna share that with us. But, but Eric, is, as a buyer and a provider of of that third party authoritative financial information. Um, you help organizations like, like Nuno and Nokia and, and, and Manny and SC and, and, and others. Uh, and you know, um, what, what are some of the benefits that you provide um, through this network to sure. your customers? And how, you know, how's that gonna be, how do they experience that? Yeah, absolutely. So it's, we recognize, you know, it, you know and with my role, I certainly, uh, day to day live this, it's all about platform to platform. And so, you know, we've been developing APIs um, since since I've uh, arrived on the scene, you know, five years ago. So, you know, plugging those into key workflow and process platforms like Trust Your Supplier is a win-win because we can feed in after we verify, you know, the financial statements, validate, you know, we're primary sourcing, you know, the private company financials on these suppliers globally, and we're getting public company financials as well. And so we're able to detect key issues and provide an early warning signal, you know, quarters or years ahead. And then we're feeding that into um, Trust Your Supplier and as well as not only a score on, to act on, but also deep, rich analytics. And I think the flip side of that as well is, you know, because Trust Your Supplier brings buyers and suppliers together. I know recently we also integrated um, to allow suppliers to rate themselves. You know, if you're a, a, a rapid ratings client, you can kick off workflows and also invite a supplier in. So that's another benefit is to eliminate redundancy on the supplier. So if they do it once and they can share it, you know, that's a real key trend today. And then also, since we're a buyer on the network, we can invite in um, our vendors, um, partners, and also clients if needed. And so that's that's a great benefit, you know, kind of a two way, two roads there. Um, and so it's been uh, really great to work with, you know, trust your suppliers since you've been innovating this, I think over the last, uh, you know, year plus. Yeah, it's 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 actually been a couple of years now, and, and we're yeah. we're grateful to have folks like uh, like like Eric and, and Rapid Ratings be part of this network. Uh, you know, 
part of part of a supplier's identity is is what others you know organizations like Rapid Ratings uh, what you know what what kind of commentary they provide whether it be a rating uh, a narrative uh, there's all sorts of organizations like Eric's on on the platform that that deal with areas other than finance whether it be cybersecurity or um, uh, sustainability or banking or any of these areas in which uh, organizations like Manny's and, and Nuno's want to really understand how that supplier is performing. What are they doing? Um, how do they measure up to our, our, our performance criteria? And so within, within a single application, one can look at this information about a supplier and very quickly draw decisions about that supplier and, and if they want to do business with them. And if they're already doing business with them, uh, and something changes within that supplier's profile. Let's say Eric uh, tells you that that, that particular supplier is, is being challenged from some financial perspective, whether they be a public or private company, that may be information that a buyer wants to take action on. Well, they get immediately notified that that, that, that change has occurred and then the appropriate actions can be taken. So it's a very, very powerful stuff. Uh, and again, all enabled by this blockchain, blockchain platform. Um, let, let me ask this uh, gentleman. So uh, you you all have multi uh, a multinational supplier presence, um, and, and so we all know that there's challenges in dealing uh, across borders, and we all know there's there's challenges in dealing with you know these multinational multi entity suppliers. How is Trust Your Supplier helping you deal with um, organizations and suppliers? Um, in, in, in the various uh, geograph ge uh, geos that, that you do business with today. Manny, can I start with you? Yeah, so maybe we are not leading here today in terms of supplier onboarding, but you're following Nokia. Nokia is the kind of leader in terms of, you know, starting onboarding with suppliers. But I, I could still, you know, with, with our experience with multiple platforms in the past and looking at the capabilities, what's offered by TOS today, one, one first important thing is, you know, you go and approach your suppliers at an entity level because you have the structure nicely built up. You have the structure at a global level as well as, you know, at an elementary level uh, or an, a local site level, which gives us good visibility, you know, who is who uh, in terms of uh, supplier mass data and also what are the different levels. So I think you're first breaking complexity because today we don't have any clue when we onboard a supplier. Normally, we go at the local entity level and try to onboard the supplier and cater to a specific plant or, you know, a specific location. But with Trust Your Supplier, I think you, in addition to what you mentioned, uh, Gary, with the pre-qualified information available per supplier before even you onboard, plus the visible entity structure, you know, then you can pick and choose what level of, you know, data it needs, which has to cater to your organization. That's a big value enabler, I would see, you know, with Trust Your Supplier. Awesome, awesome. And, and you know, Nokia, uh, obviously every, the world knows Nokia, uh, and Nokia has, has presence in, you know, worldwide. Uh, and so Trust Your Supplier is helping you, uh, as you roll out the platform, to bring that, that kind of global community together. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I, th I think one of the, the key elements that Trust Your Supplier really brings a huge advantage, it's that we're going to be able to centralize everything into a platform. We're going to be able to improve the data quality of our suppliers. We're going to be able to have a history when we click in a supplier, let's like, as you may tell, we have all the legal entities associated and all the information associated to that. So that's really important to us because we have many systems. We need to search in many systems and now we can have everything consolidated in one place. What is also really important, it's not to leave TYS alone. So TYS through APIs, through any other forms of connection, they will transport or deliver the data to our existing systems. So we have a one central stop shop. And that is crucial for us. Whenever we need to prospect for a supplier, it's so difficult, we need to Google, search in many ways. With TYS, we have immediately a profile of the supplier using our third-party verifiers as Rapid Ratings, Dumb and Bradstreet, and others that give us a glimpse about that supplier so that we can decide if we want to connect with them. And all of this we don't have right now. It's spread across different process, spread across different systems, and TYS is going to be able to combine everything in one single place. 
and that for us it's really really a key advantage yeah maybe if we can add another uh, critical point one of the big challenge today is the player onboarding right so an organization like us spends times and hours in terms of onboarding suppliers right yeah. and qualifying the supplier and then prepare them mm -hmm. for a sourcing or contracting process so I think uh, in terms of um, the major change which uh, I see in terms of you know, a buyer life cycle is to leverage platforms like TYS and to discover suppliers is, is something which we discussed. But also in terms of uh, speeding up the supplier onboarding process, which is key. Mm -hmm. And today, if you look at it, Schneider has history you know, with uh, suppliers uh, who were there in the system for several years, maybe several decades. And then the structure of hierarchy is, you know, always getting changed and we always follow the supplier, you know, hierarchy change and it is happening quite, the, the information reaches very late. By the time, you know, it reaches, it's like again changing. Probably with TYS, you know, we should be able to get high value there when the supplier is, mm -hmm. you know, changing certain structure or hierarchy, right? The information reaches as fast so that mm -hmm. we are able to, you know, manage uh, the, the supply chain related, you know, changes much effectively within within the entire global mm -hmm. supply chain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and 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 sorry, Manny and Gary, let me just one 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 last comment. One of the things that also TYS is going to bring is standardization. So as you said in very well, we're going to be able to reduce the cycle time to onboard the supplier, which is really fantastic. But another element is that the supplier does not need to repeat the same information okay. over and over again. So having a standard questionnaire across the telecom industry, for example, the supplier has a unique digital identity. He already is onboarded. He already shared the information. And the only thing that Nokia needs to focus, it's Nokia specific questions. And this is a huge relief for us because we spend a lot of time. And for the supplier, of course, it's also extremely challenging. So I just wanted to compliment for this. Yeah. Yeah, I'll add, yeah, there's, that's great. There's a catalog of really questions predefined already, you know, on a set of compliance questions and risk questions that you can send out to the supplier or vendor. So to Nuno's point, TYS has standardized that based on, you know, um, industry standards out there like NIST and things like that from a cyber perspective. And so that's really key to have where you can launch it right there. From our perspective, we have also as Manny touched on for pre-qualification, supporting some of that, we um, put some um, public company freemium kind of data into Trust Your Supplier. So there's a freemium app available uh, when you join Trust Your Supplier, so you can use that data to get to know us. And then it's really around, you know, launching a private company request. And so for us, TYS is a great conduit to help us facilitate workflows to go gather that financial data from about 150 global, you know, countries globally where these private company suppliers are to support our clients like a Nokia so they can get the freshest and latest available data. You know, when they need it, they can push a button and request it. And so then we have to, we go and that launches workflows to bring the data back in, as Nuno said, to have it all in one place, have all the breadcrumbs in one place, you know, you're not, um, you know, going around to all these different tables and trying to clean up a mess in one platform to another. So it's nice to have it all in one spot. Great, Eric. And, you know, Eric, you used the word conduit, right? And so when we think about a con, you know, we, we believe that, you know, you know, blockchain is a conduit in our, our, our trust or supplier application is uh, utilizes that conduit amongst all of the organizations, all of the constituents on the network. And, and that really ends up being a consortium. And that's, that's really what this round table is all about today is, is how do you build business value out of a consortium? And, and again, we look at it as, well, it's, it's, a, it's a conduit and a conduit necessarily has to be shared by many, right? And so there's some challenges with that. Uh, as we all know, organizations have typically uh, orchestrated enterprises, they're, they're back in enterprise uh, fairly autonomously. Um, and now what, what blockchain is bringing to the fore is if, if you want to, if you want to partner, if you want to be on a network, uh, you're going to have to share information. You're going to have to share sta established standards. Uh, these are things that may have been uncomfortable 
um, to large enterprises like yours in the past. And then Eric, certainly on your side, uh, you're trying to service all of these types of organizations uh, with your data, but you have to recognize that you know there's there's a proprietary, confidential, and and competitive nature in sharing information. So, um, Manny, maybe I'll start with you. Um, uh, you know, how do you how do you look at this from um, you know from a consortium perspective, and the need to kind of culturally pivot into a, a highly shared environment? Yeah, you touched a very important point, right? So it's stereotyped today. You know, organization doesn't share data across different companies. Even it happens within the organization as well, right? So for, for me, I think uh, what the fundamental concept of blockchain is what you know you are actually having the openness to come and share the data with certain level of security yes but i think things will change the, the moment we start evolving you know in terms of uh, scaling up uh, millions of suppliers into the database i think uh, organization will find mutual interest to share certain level of data okay so, something at a very high level could be shared through the consortium where every organization gets benefit out of it I see as it as a big trend change, you know, with with platforms like TYS and the Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 um, Eric, what are your thoughts? Sure. Well, I think um, from our point of view, of course, private company financials, you know, we don't share that like a, we don't deal it out like a deck of cards because the private company, you know, it's very sensitive data, you know, analogous to you know tax returns, and so, you know, it's very gated, you know on a relationship with that supplier, you know, with their client. But but where the, the trend is going is if you give the supplier the control, obviously they need to comply with, you know, Nokia standard or Schneider's standard, you know, supplier, you know, code of conduct kind of thing. You give them the power to control who they're sharing it with, you know, they can share it on TYS. And so as long as they, um, we're finding that trend and that's why we launched the FHR network for private companies to, for the first time to get data on themselves, do peer benchmarking, and then be able to share that out on a one to many, you know, on a, on a one to one or a one to many basis. Sure. But giving them the control while fulfilling their compliance because it is very private in nature. So. Sure especially with private organizations uh, we've you know we, we, we've seen a number of organizations move from the public to private sector uh, recently and so um, gaining that information is it's challenging right and it's not part of the public record so that's that's interesting so and and Nuno you've been you know you've been part of our TYS family for since almost the very beginning as we've kind of culturally uh, matured. Oops, I think we lost Gary a minute. You know you are on mute. Thank you. What I was saying, there was a cut in the middle. I was not able to hear your question. Oh, I was just letting you know that you've been part of, uh, you've been part of the TYS family since the beginning. I apologize mm -hmm. for that. And, yeah. uh, uh, you've seen a lot of cultural, you know, the, the manifestation of cultural change, standardization of questionnaires, as an example, uh, which is quite challenging, as we all know. And and you went through that process um, as part of building this this consortium, this network. Um, and you know, just well, what are your thoughts about what a company and, and an organization needs to do um, to accept the fact that they're you know they're going to be part part of a a, a larger network, a a consortium of organizations. Uh, and what that entails. If we speak on the Nokia side, um, it's all about change management, and it is always a very tricky topic to, to address, change management. People are always reluctant to change and understand the change. So what we have done simply is really to put good and strong business cases. We put the people working on the platform to understand the added value it's going to bring to them, how they can be much more productive executing their work, because we will have third party verifiers doing also the validation, standardization. So it really took a lot of time to do that. I would say roughly six to seven months to do that internal job in Nokia. But right now, I think they really understand the power and the advantage they can extract from that. 
from the supplier side, it's always very tricky. The supplier sees as a, as a change, as additional effort, another platform that we're going to be bringing. So we have to teach them and, and explain to them that this is going to be a one-stop shop. They're also going to be able to reduce a lot of time, a lot of effort. They can con concentrate everything on the platform. And as many and Eric said, they own the data. So they right. decide to who they want to share. So they control the data. And that was a really strong element that uh, really supported the suppliers to join the network. But answering your question very straightforward, change management, it's always, always a very difficult topic to address internally in any organization. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I, I see our, our fourth member has joined us. Hi, hi Pia, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Apologies. I had lots of technical issues trying to, uh, to get on board. So. Sure. Do you want to uh, take a minute to introduce yourself? Yes, uh, Pia Gaviria. I am a transformation manager for procurement at supply chain at uh, BT Group, and uh, currently lead of a number of uh, initiatives that include uh, TYS uh, implementation within my organization. Great. Thanks for thanks for thanks for joining us today. You know, we were just talking about the digital transformation that that Manny and Nuno and and Eric have gone through um, in joining joining the Trust Your Supplier Network and, um, and, and integrating the solution into their, in, in kind of into their enterprise. And maybe you could just share your, your story and how meaningful this is going to be, not just in terms of Trust Your Supplier, but what it really means to, to be part of a network in which information is going to be, you know, shared with your, both your supplier base and, and potentially, you know, with, with other third party providers and, and some other, you know, large enterprises on this network. I, for us, uh, what the network does is um, allow us to manage supplier information in a single place. And that is a life changer it's, it's for a number of reasons. Uh, the first one is that we are a global organization and um, a lot of the supplier information today is only really visible to operational stakeholders. And what we want to be able to do is democratize the access, extend it beyond those stakeholders, um, give also visibility about suppliers that work with us that are already qualified and provide transparency on, on the whole process. Um, and this, this is what the network does, does for us um, and the reason why we, we, we're bringing it in and, and our suppliers with us. Sure, sure. Um, so. So, so, so transparent. You mentioned that word transparency, and that's that's a real keyword, right? Because um, what we're looking for when we when when buyers establish a partnership with whether suppliers, their vendors, transparency is more important than ever, right? Because we're in a very complex world. The last fourteen or fifteen months has kind of proven that. For example, some some are going back to the office now. Health and safety protocols are extremely important. Uh, and there's and there's really important to have transparency around those kind of protocols. So, um, you know, maybe Nuno, you could talk about how 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 transparency from a supplier base is really important. You know, to Nokia and and knowing what the supplier is about and, and their characteristics and um, uh, knowing about their organization, knowing almost as much about the organization as they know about themselves. So you feel comfortable that they're not not just a, a vendor, but they're a partner. Right, they're there representing Nokia. That's very important to you, isn't it? Absolutely, it's it's really important for us. And transparency it was also one of the buzzwords that I used on the beginning when I was explaining about the digital journey. It's all about trusting each other. It's all about sharing information, and this is really important commitment that we do with our suppliers. What we try to do is to be the most honest and transparent as possible. We explain how the situation is going to work where their data is going to be transferred, why do we need their data to be evaluated, and that is a really huge effort that we are doing. We have supplier relationship managers really focus on each of the top suppliers to make sure that that effective transparency is shared across both companies. So that connection with the supplier is extremely important. Without that, we could not do that. And we trust the supplier. That transparency is there. They know exactly what they share with us, we know exactly what we share with them, and that flows really perfectly. So that's why we really believe that TYS 
it's going to be a really game changer, a big game changer for all the industry in telecommunication. Yeah, yeah. And Eric, I mean, your your organization is all about transparency, right? You create that transparency yeah. for for uh, for buy, absolutely, for, yeah, for all kind of organizations, right? Giving that insights on you know using the financial statements as a source, and then running our quantitative models that really gives you know issues and highlights you know what might be happening at that company early on rather than later in yeah. terms of financial health sure sure and uh you know and when we talk about you know transparency we have conversations with suppliers all the time about how they you know they they they, they have information that that, that the organizations like nokia bt schneider electric they're constantly asking for you know what's your tax your tax registration your your certificate of insurance uh, uh, your banking details all of these things I mean that's the transparency you need to to reliably do business with someone right and, and that'll so, foster yeah that'll foster a better dialogue and help companies like Nuno and Schneider and BT to lean in and you, it doesn't have to be a punitive conversation you know I'm sure there there are um, you know, in order to foster a better relationship, you know, you might be doing some sort of financing, extending terms. We know with the pandemic, you know, our clients, you know, we're sending people, you know, on site. Were they able to invest, you know, and, and help prop up a vendor or supplier, you know, do spot buys. So there's a lot of tactics and it doesn't have to be a negative conversation. When they're sharing all this information, you, you can really help that relationship be stronger by using that information. Sure. I think and it's when, it, when a supplier is not transparent, you know, that sends a red flag. You know, they're not willing to share. They're not willing to share their financials. Big red flag. How can you even know, like, how can you even have a conversation if they're not sharing at the outset? Yeah. And I guess, you know, like Pia, for example, you, you guys work in a, in sometimes a regulated environment, right? So that transparency is not just something you like to have, it's something you need to have, right? Yes, definitely. Um, but I, I think it's also very uh, beneficial for suppliers in that they will have uh, that single identity that they can carry with them and uh, be shared across a number of partners across our industry and others. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not only, I guess it's, it's not only the, uh, the manual effort that it requires, but it's just, uh, I guess it's the, it's the uh, the advantages of uh, being part of a network that is recognized by the industry. I think as, as a credential for suppliers is uh, actually very important. Yeah, it, it sure is. And we, you know, I know suppliers uh, that are using the network are finding that value is that they, you know, I think what they're finding is that, you know, a conduit like this, we could use conduit uh, as a metaphor before, um, they're finding that they can now take this conduit uh, and, and with transparency and with organizations like Eric providing that commentary about them, now you know it's easier to find business opportunities because now now organizations like yours are you know are, are, are more readily uh, um, kind of uh, you're more ready to do business with them because they, they, you have their information. You can see what that supplier is all about, especially if it's a new supplier, and now you know how it is that. Uh, how what you know, that some of their behavior, some of their qualifications and characteristics, and okay, what am I getting? What am I getting when I bring the supplier on? I understand the product or service they're providing, but what are what does the organization look like? And if I understand that organization, then I have a level of confidence that they're going to fit in my culture, that they're going to be compliant, they're going to de-risk my organization. Mm -hmm. Mm Um, so you've got you, you've got a tremendous amount with that that broad supplier base, and um, uh, so so I think I'm sure sometimes you run into a situation where a supplier is not as transparent as you want, and uh, and you've got to do it you you've got to dig deeper uh, to try to understand that relationship a bit better, right? And QIS must help you with that. Yeah, so for, for me. Transparency and trust, you know, are two fundamental pillars of building supplier relationship. So we trust your suppliers when you have transparent data. I think it's becoming a cornerstone 
getting supply relationship right. So that's how I see. It. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And so, uh, folks, I think we're coming actually to the end of our time. If I look at the clock, um, uh, let me just do uh, once around. Maybe each take uh, we each take a minute and summarize. Um, Eric, maybe I'll start with yourself. Sure. Um, you know, glad we joined, and basically. You know, the trend is platform to platform and transparency. And so, you know, I think, you know, validating what we do um, will enable our clients to do their jobs better and to lean in and to do risk mitigation, you know, early on versus get stung later by a bankruptcy or a default. Great. And Eric, thanks so much for being with us today, Manny. For me, I think, yes, uh, it's an excellent opportunity, you know, uh, in order to unlock the value through blockchain. Yes, it's new technology, plus building, you know, transparency and trust in, in, in terms of, you know, shaping the supply relationship uh, globally with, with the set of, you know, uh, new suppliers, existing suppliers, uh, and the potential suppliers. Yeah. Great, thanks. Thanks. Nuno? For us, it's very simple. One-stop shop an amazing platform. We're going to believe we're going to have everything integrated there. Our supplier is going to be discovered there. They're going to be seen as a trusted supplier to other buyers. It's going to reduce the cycle time, and it's also going to reduce the risk compliance, which is so important to Nokia, yes, for sure. BT and other and Schneider as well, and, and rapid rating. But the compliance, the cost, the cycle time, everything concentrated in one place, it's all about QIS. So we really believe that UIS will be, again, a huge game changer in the industry. All right, thanks. Thanks, Nuno, so much. So, and Pia? It's uh, just having access ourselves and the suppliers to this uh, central point of information. And the uh, just as I said before, it's really, really important that they, they join a, a community that uh, of verified suppliers with credentials that can be shared across our industry and multiple industries. It's, it, it, is, it is a big, very important change for suppliers. Sure. Uh, and thanks, thanks to you all for joining us here today. Um, you know, I get an opportunity to work with um, yourselves and, and your teams and, and others on our network on a daily basis. And I, I can honestly say we learn something every day about uh, the world of supplier relationship management. And we also learn a little bit about uh, consortium building. And we learn about, most of all, I think we talk, we, we learn about trust and partnerships. And uh, if we think about technology and how technology is changing our lives, technology like, like blockchain, um, one of the things that we're bringing to the table with trust your supplier is that first word trust uh, and 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 the partnership uh, that's how trust is relates to that partnership and so um, you know we really enjoy having uh, an opportunity to bring that technology in a way that it's going to help you transform your organization not just digitally but just in terms of you know how you conduct business and how you how you how you handle your partnerships with your suppliers and uh, and how organizations like Eric uh, are able to bring that, that that authoritative information into the fold and allow that um, allow uh, allow that that trust to be um, the verified and credibility and credentials uh, to be to be more closely understood. So this has been a, a fantastic uh, opportunity to to share some of that here today. I hope uh, everyone in the audience uh, and that's listening to the recording. Uh, got some value out of this, and we certainly appreciate everyone that uh, that took the time to listen to us, and uh, and hopefully we'll speak again soon. Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Thank you.